Namaskar and welcome back to Aviation Avi. Go where you feel the most alive. In today's video, we'll understand the calculations behind Table 3-1 of NX14, where we will understand the minimum separation distances between a taxiway and a runway and between two taxiways. If you watch this video till the end, be sure that you will not have to memorize any values of table 3-1 but you will be able to calculate the separation distances on your own. So let's get started. Firstly, let us look at some important definitions. Number one is the runway. It is a defined rectangular area on land aerodrome prepared for the landing and takeoff of an aircraft. So as you can see in the image here, this is a runway. Number two is the taxiway. It is a defined path on a land aerodrome established for the taxiing of aircraft and intended to provide a link between one part of the aerodrome to another. So as you can see in the image here, this is the taxiway that provides a link from the apron to the runway. Further, this is another taxiway which provides a link from the runway to another taxiway. This is another taxiway that provides a thorough route through the apron. So each of these taxiways link one part of the aerodrome to other and they have different defined names. Let us look what are they. Firstly is the aircraft stand taxiway. It is a portion of an apron designated as a taxiway and is intended to provide access to the aircraft stands only. So this, as you can see, that provides access to the aircraft stand of only. This part of the taxiway is the aircraft stand taxiway. Further is the apron taxiway. A portion of the taxiway system located on an apron and is intended to provide a through taxi route across the apron. As you can see, this part of the taxiway, which provides thorough access throughout the entire apron, is the apron taxiway. Next is a rapid exit taxiway. It is a taxiway connected to a runway at an acute angle and is designed to allow landing aeroplanes to turn off at higher speeds than are achieved on other exit taxiway, thereby minimizing runway occupancy times. Now let us look at this diagram to understand a rapid exit taxiway. Firstly, let us consider an aircraft landing on this runway. The probable exits for this aircraft are number 1 and number 2. If an aircraft is instructed to vacate via this taxiway, which is connected at an acute angle to this runway, in that case, the aircraft can exit the runway at higher speeds. So this taxiway, which is connected to the runway at acute angle, is called the rapid exit taxiway. And these taxiways help to reduce runway occupancy times. So we have learnt about three different types of taxiway. This being the aircraft stand taxi lane, this being the apron taxiway, and this being a rapid exit taxiway. Now let us move forward and understand the table 3-1. The para 3.9.7 of NX 14 says that the separation distance between the central line of the taxiway and the central line of the runway. The central line of a parallel taxiway or an object shall be not less than the appropriate distances specified in table 3-1, except that it may be permissible to operate with lower separation distances at an existing aerodrome if the aeronautical study indicates that such lower separation distances would not adversely affect the safety or significantly affect the regularity of operations of aeroplanes. What this para means is the distance between the center line of the taxiway and that of the runway or between center line of one taxiway to another taxiway or the center line of a taxiway to another object shall be as per table 3-1 and these distances may further be reduced if aeronautical study at that aerodrome permit safe aircraft operation with reduced distances. So now let us finally move forward to the calculations of table 3-1. So this is table 3-1. So as you go down the rows on this table, you are referring to aircraft with a greater wingspan. So on the rows are the different code letter of the aircraft that is being taken into consideration. 
and along the 13 columns that are there, there is description of different separation distances based on the condition being uh, referred to at that point of time. Like the column 10 of this table refers to taxiway center line to taxiway center line distance in meters. So when you consider this particular cell, you see the distance between taxiway center line to taxiway center line when there is code F operations on that aerodrome should be 91 meters. So with this video, we'll understand how this 91 meters is actually calculated. Now let us understand the calculation behind column 10 of table 3-1, which gives the distance between taxiway center line to taxiway center line. For the ease of our calculation, we'll be considering that the taxiway accommodates an aircraft of code F, which has a wingspan of 65 meters up to, but not including 80 meters. We will consider taxiway alpha and taxiway bravo and we will calculate the distance between these two center lines. The distance from the wingtip of a code F aircraft to nearby object should be 7.5 meters. As we know that when aircraft move on taxiway, they are moving at higher speeds, which may result in a wheel deviation. So, Further to this clearance of 7.5 meters, when we calculate distances on taxiways where aircraft moves at higher speed, we add a buffer of 3.5 meters in addition to this clearance. So, practically let us look at this example. Now let us consider there are two code F aircrafts on one on taxiway alpha and another on taxiway bravo. So on this side extends the half of the wingspan of a code F aircraft that is maximum of 80 meters, so half the wingspan becomes 40 meters. On taxiway Bravo is another aircraft whose half the wingspan is another 40 meters. So as I said before, the distance between these two wingtips as given in this table should be 7.5 meters plus another 3.5 meters as we keep a buffer for probable wheel deviation. So this gives us 7.5 meters plus 3.5 meters, that is 11 meters. So the total distance between taxiway center line to taxiway center line while we are accommodating a code F aircraft on these taxiways is 91 meters, that is 40 plus 40, 80 plus 11, 91. So this is how we have got the value of 91 here in this cell of table 3-1. Now in the comment section below, I want you all to give me a calculation of 63 meters while we are accommodating code D aircraft on this taxiway. How is the value of 63 arrived at? Now let us look at the calculations behind column 11 of table 3-1, which is the distance between taxiway other than aircraft stand taxi lane center line to object. So, as we know that these are the aircraft stand taxi lanes that lead the aircraft to the aircraft stand. So this is a taxiway other than the aircraft stand taxi lane. We will look at the distance from the aircraft stand taxi lane to center line of object. Now let us consider that there is a vehicle on this vehicular lane on the apron. So this becomes an object. So we will see the minimum distance that is required from the center line of this taxiway to the vehicular lane. So for this calculation again, we'll be considering a code F aircraft, which has a maximum wingspan of 80 meters. So half the wingspan becomes 40 meters here. So as we discussed before, the minimum clearance for a code F aircraft from a code F aircraft wingtip to the nearby object should be 7.5 meters. So to this 40 meters here, we add 7.5 meters. Again, since this is a taxiway and here aircraft move at higher speeds, we add a wheel deviation of 3.5 meters further. That gives us a clearance of 7.5 plus 3.5 meters, that is 11 meters. Thus, the total distance from the central line of the taxi lane to the vehicular lane is 51 meters, that is 40 plus 11, 51. Now, please let us know in the comment section below 
how is this calculation for code C of 26 arrived at? Now let us look at the calculation behind the column 12 of table 3-1 which gives the distance between aircraft stand taxiway center line to aircraft stand taxi lane center line. So in the image here we have two aircraft stand taxi lanes that have the capability to accommodate a code F aircraft which has a maximum wingspan of 80 meters. So considering that half the wingspan over here is 40 meters and half the wingspan for this aircraft stand taxi lane is 40 meters. So this distance here is 40 plus 40 and now since we know the minimum distance between the wingtip of code F aircraft to the next nearby object is 7.5 meters as you can see in this table here we add another 7.5. Now in this case since the aircraft is stationary and there is no wheel deviation to be considered here so we do not add additional 3.5 meters here. So the distance between aircraft stand taxiway center line to aircraft stand taxiway center line becomes 40 plus 7.5 plus 40 meters which gives you a total of 87.5 meters. So in the comment section below please let me know how this calculation of 72.5 meters for code E aircraft has been come to. Now let us understand the calculation behind column 13 of table 3-1 which gives the distance between aircraft stand taxi lane center line to object. So as you can see in the image this is the aircraft stand taxi lane to nearby object as in this case is the wing tip of nearby aircraft and with this we will understand how is this value of 47.5 arrived at considering a code f aircraft so half the wingspan of code f is 40 plus additional 7.5 meters is added as per the table given here here again we, as the aircraft is stationary on the aircraft stand taxi lane we do not add a wheel deviation of 3.5 meters here so the distance from aircraft stand taxi lane center line to the nearby object is 40 plus 7.5 that is 47.5. If you have understood th this, let us know in the comment section below how this value of 16.5 is arrived at for a code B aircraft. All the values that you need to calculate this value of 16.5 for a code B aircraft is right in front of your screen. I am asking you to pause the video and comment down in the comment section below so that you can understand how far your understanding on table 3-1 has developed. Now let us understand the calculation behind column 4 and column 5 of table 3-1 which gives the distance between taxiway center line and runway center line for instrument runways. One point to be noted here that is not mentioned in the table is that instrument runways of code 3 and code 4 must have a runway strip of 140 meters on each side of the runway center line. This is the condition for instrument runways. So considering this, let us calculate the distance between taxiway center line and runway center line for instrument runways. Now we will consider that there is a code F aircraft that can be accommodated on this taxiway and on this runways may be noted that there may be no obstacle on the runway strip. So if there is to be any object that is to be present near the runway, it should always be beyond the runway strip. So no matter what code of aircraft you accommodate here, you should always give a buffer of 140 meters on each side of the center line while you are considering the case of a runway. So here, while we accommodate a code F aircraft on this taxiway, the buffer from the runway center line is of 140 meters considering the strip of 140 meters. Further, if there is a code F aircraft on this taxiway, in that case, half the wingspan on this side of the taxiway center line will be 40 meters. This gives you the total distance between the runway center line and the taxiway center line as 180 meters that may has to be the distance between these two center lines. So this is how we arrive at the value of 180 that is given in this table here. 
so now that you have understood the calculation of 180 i want you to give me in the comment section below how this value of 158 for code c aircraft on a code 4 runway has been arrived at so this is table 3-1 now that you have watched the video fully you will be able to arrive at each of these values given in the table and you do not have to memorize any of these values given you know that which code letter of the aircraft refers to what particular wingspan for that aircraft and the minimum clearance that is to be given between the wingtip of the aircraft and the nearby object and the condition that an additional 3.5 meter of probable wind deviation has to be added in case we were considering aircraft moving on a taxiway other than aircraft stand taxiway. Given these values are with view, you can calculate each of the distances between the center lines that are given in table 3-1. So I hope this video helped you understand table 3-1 in detail. This presentation was made by Mr. Shantanu and it is being delivered by me that is Anvesha Pal. If you liked our work, do not forget to like, share and subscribe because your support is our motivation. And in the comment section down below, I hope you are able to explain how each of these values given in the different cells of table 3-1 are arrived at. If you want to watch more of our videos, let us know in the comment section below what are the further subjects you'd like us to discuss upon. This is Anvesha Pal signing off. Thank you.